Hello dear friends, may God bless all of you. May the Holy Spirit come. May the Holy Spirit come to confirm this in each of you. He the Holy Spirit is the one who convinces us. He's the one who guides us. He is the light. He is the truth. So may he conduct our thoughts, our meditation in order for us to extract the best out of it for our lives to practice here on earth. I'd like to tell you that from Sunday to Monday in the middle of the night of Monday at 3 a.m. At 3 a.m., we are going to be here making a very special prayer video, the pajamas prayer video. I say pajama because people won't have to leave the house. They won't have to change clothes to go to a night video. On their pajamas, they can participate of the video and be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So this Monday at 3 a.m., Monday 3 a.m., Brazil time, which means that in other parts of the world, you should see the time that is convenient for you, or rather the time that you are going to be whether at home or at work according to the time zone, but wherever you are, you can participate in the night video because it will be transmitted live. And it, you have to be live so that people who are interested can participate in it all over the world, all over the planet. Everyone is welcome to take part in it. However, the time will be this Monday at 3 a.m. Brazil time. Brazil time. 3 a.m. Very well. So now I'd like to speak to you about this preparation because I'd not like to make this night video without you being prepared. Prepared. Because a night vigil to receive the Holy Spirit is not just the sacrifice of being awake at 3 a.m. seeking the Holy Spirit. You have to invest in this. And how can you invest in it? How can you prepare yourself? You know that a bride or a groom, they prepare themselves to meet up on God's altar don't they, in the wedding day. And so it is regarding people who come to meet the groom, that is Jesus, to be sealed with the Holy Spirit this Monday. So you have to prepare yourself. So what clothes are you going to wear? You already know the clothes are the pajamas, physically speaking. But spiritually speaking, you have to be prepared. And I myself am getting ready as well so that this night vigil can be better, much, much better than the last one was. So how should you prepare yourself spiritually? You have to prepare yourself spiritually because you are going to enter God's presence in spirit. And you, you have to be in spirit in order for you to also be blessed by receiving the Holy Spirit. And how does this preparation happen, you may ask? The preparation is straight away from this moment. I would like you to make like a fast of Daniel, in a way, until the day of the vigil. You have to prepare yourself. You have to avoid futile, useless, vain thoughts, the things of the world. You must avoid 
to be on social media and and share your emotional experiences there and so on you must you must fill your thoughts with the things of god and i'd suggest for you to read the bible as much as possible if you want you can start there from genesis or you can read the gospel of luke chapter 1 any gospel but ideally you have to be attentive to chapter 1 of luke why because it speaks about how jesus was born it speaks of the birth of jesus the preparation for the lord jesus coming into this world and when you read and meditate you are going to see and understand that there is a preparation for the person to receive the holy spirit they must prepare themselves so they have to organize themselves spiritually organize their thoughts avoid the bad companies or the companies that only speak nonsense they only talk about the things of this life of this world of fashion and these and football etc you have to invest your thoughts according to god he is his spirit you must invest your thoughts which is your spirit in the things in the words of god so that then you will be ready ready to receive the holy spirit the holy text says that that the angel the angel gabriel was sent to to where virgin mary was he was sent to the city of nazareth nazareth was and still is the least considered the least important city back in the day so those who lived in nazareth were simple people commoners poor people and in the sixth month the holy text says the sixth month for us is the month of june but it's the sixth month in the hebrew calendar so in the sixth month the angel gabriel was sent by god to a city of galilee named nazareth and to whom was he sent he was sent to a virgin betrothed to a man you can read this in luke chapter 1 27 he was sent to a virgin betrothed that was about to get married that was committed already she hadn't consumed her marriage yet but she was already basically married almost married indeed so he was sent to this young lady who lived there in nazareth she was betrothed to a man whose name was joseph joseph was of the house of david he was from the lineage of david and the name of the virgin was mary and having come in the angel said to her rejoice highly favored one so that's how the angel greeted her the lord is with you blessed are you among women meaning that among all the women she was blessed which means that of all the women that there were at the time young ones out of all of them mary was chosen by god 
and the angel went to her, to Mary. What for? To prepare her to receive the Holy Spirit. Isn't it beautiful? This is very glorious. The angel went to tell her so that she would be ready to receive the Spirit of God. It's what the text says here. And that's why she was favored, blessed, blessed among women. She was the chosen one. And few are those who have such privilege of receiving the Holy Spirit because the majority of people are taking care of their own lives, trying to conquer material things. The majority of people are taking care of their future here on earth. The majority of people in this world don't care at all about God's existence. However, whether the person believes or not in God's existence, one day they will be before him. And then it will be too late because he will judge them. So every human being, excuse me, Every human being, whether they believe in God or not, faithful or unfaithful, it doesn't matter. It's a human being. It's a soul. One day, they will be before God's courtroom in the final judgment. And God will demand from each one of the souls the things which he offered them whilst they were here on earth. He offered the best to them. He himself came into the world to save them. But as he was rejected, he has been rejected by the vast majority of people who say, oh, I don't believe in God. Many people don't believe in God. The majority doesn't. Because if they did, then this world would be a lot different. So these people will be judged and see God. But then it's over. It's going to be too late for them. We only have time to be saved whilst we are here on earth. Because then the person has the right. They have their free will to accept the sacrifice of the Son of God for them or not. Those who accept and submit to the Lordship of the Lord Jesus as their Savior, then these are saved. So, what was this process of the birth of Jesus? You see that first, the angel Gabriel came to visit Mary and spoke to her. Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Which means that the angel greeted her this way. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. She was probably shocked with the vision, the sight of the angel in front of her. But she was even more let's say, scared about the way the angel greeted her. 
Then the angel, knowing this, said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. You have found favor with God. So God has been sending his angels throughout this world. Not heavenly angels, but men, servants of his, who preach the word, who speak of the Holy Scriptures all the way. These angels, who are men, are preaching the word of God, announcing Jesus, announcing Jesus. And obviously, that unfortunately, not everyone pays attention to their words. However, when Mary heard from the angel these words, the text says that Mary, it says here in the text, that she was absolutely given, we can say, to that idea because she was considering that greeting. Wow, I am the most blessed among all the women. Wow, this is too strong. This is too great. This is extraordinary. I was chosen by God. Wow, you can imagine the joy, the joy that entered Mary. And this is also the situation of those who, for example, for example, those who are hearing this message and they are waiting for the chance to be visited as well, not by an angel, because God's angel here, in case it's me, speaking to you, but not just I am the one speaking, but there are many angels, men, women, servants, missionaries, men of God who are in this world out there, visiting people, visiting the Marys of today and telling them, listen, the Lord is with you, blessed are you, blessed are you. So the truth, the truth is that when Mary heard, when she heard those words, obviously the Holy Spirit gave her understanding of them and she prepared herself to receive the Holy Spirit, to receive the visit of the Holy Spirit, the Father of our Lord Jesus, who would come to involve her, who would come to involve her and generate his son in her womb. And that's what we want to see happening this Monday at 3 a.m. Because when a person receives the Holy Spirit, then a child of God is born. A child of God is born. That's it. This Monday at 3 a.m., Brazil time, and everyone can participate all over the world. Anyone can participate. You can invite anyone, even on the other side of the world, to participate. I don't know the time it will be there in that time zone, but I know that we are going to be here praying, crying out, uniting our faith for the Holy Spirit to descend upon everyone. May God bless you all, and I see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.